thank you for your forbearance. Um, I want to talk about two things very quickly. Um, the last time I was with uh, President El Sisi, he was most concerned in Libya about the Muslim Brotherhood. This is an ongoing thing with him. But first, I want to talk about Russia very quickly. Uh, if you could be, I'd like both of you to give me your responses on um, the Russian activity. We've talked about Wagner and, and their um, uh, effort there, the mercenary, uh, the proxies that uh, Russia's there. If you look at what, a little bit of history between Murmansk, uh, Kaliningrad, uh, Sevastopol, and now Latakia and Tortoise, we see that they have been beneficiaries of this nefarious activity, three in just the last, what, five to six years, uh, 10 years anyway, <clears throat> between uh, the Crimea at Sevastopol and now uh, Latakia and, and Tortoise. Uh, when I look at Tripoli, this is an easy thing for them. It doesn't cost a lot of money. They've encouraged this nefarious activity. What is their uh, end game, and how do you suggest that we and the allies actually stand up there? There's a limit to, uh, uh, to uh, sanctions. Um, I understand you know, we're sanctioning pretty much everybody in Russia right now. How much further can we go, and, and are we not in an in a area of diminishing return with that alone? And don't we need uh, a little more uh, cohesive approach from NATO, all the allies uh, with regard to this nefarious activity uh, that Russia is engaged in, particularly with Wagner over the last uh, three or four years, or two years. Thank you, Senator. Um, I, think, I think you're absolutely correct that we see a, gr a growing pattern of Russian behavior here. Um, I think in terms of Russian objectives, one is they want to demonstrate that they're a, a global power and that no international conflict will be settled without them having a seat at the table and their interests, however they may define them in that conflict, uh, being acknowledged and, and taken care of. Uh, particularly with regard to, to the Libya conflict, uh, we see Russia intend to, you're correct, uh, secure itself a military foothold on NATO's southern flank, on the southern part of the Mediterranean, and as well as to gain control over Libya's natural resources, again, to serve its own narrow political and economic interests. Uh, you are correct that um, while we have used sanctions, they are one tool out of many that we need to use, all our means of diplomatic information and economic power in order to deter Russia from aggressive behavior. So we have done a lot of work at NATO in terms of raising efforts to counter Russian aggression. Sorry to interrupt, uh, but it, the, their gray war, it just doesn't seem to me that the sanctions have, much, have had much impact on their gray effort. It, 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 some, some elements of it make it more difficult for Russia to operate. I mean, they need to be able to move personnel and funds, and we can make it much more difficult for them to operate. We can publicly attribute the work that they're doing so that they do not have deniability, and that remains a key uh, tool in our toolbox to counter Russian aggression. And you're correct. We need to continue to work with our allies and partners, particularly in Europe, to raise the cost for Russia, to deter Russia, and to call out their bad behavior. I agree 100% with what said. Chris said, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's a malign actor. Um, and it would be helpful if we could expand what is now a unilateral san sanction to a, a multilateral, uh, much more effective, I think, if we had Europe on board. Correct. Well, they, they just don't seem to be deterred. These things keep falling in their lap. Latakia and Tortoise, I'm very concerned about. Um, they're not down on the horn, but uh, this southern flank of uh, Europe really concerns me. I think they have their eyes on Tripoli. Um, El Sisi is very concerned about the Muslim Brotherhood um, and their part in the GNA. Talk to me just a little bit about, is this really a danger? Is this a force compared to what ISIS is doing? Or is ISIS on the rebound there? And is Russia playing, just a three-part question, is Russia benefiting regardless of, of the outcome? Are they, do they get just as much benefit from an instability there versus a real outcome? Uh, thank you. I'll, I'll talk about the, the Islamist question here. Uh, to be sure, the GNA does have ties with Muslim Brotherhood affiliated militia um, in Tripoli. Uh, but I would also add, uh, as we heard earlier, I think from Senator Menendez, uh, that Haftar has his own different flavor of Islamists. They're Salafists, that mm -hmm. he is aligned with Salafist militia. Uh, this is something what, that will be ter determined, I think, in political talks between the LNA and GNA about the status of uh, Islamists in the country, uh, what uh, what their role will be, what the role of political Islam will be in that in that country. Um, as for ISIS, uh, you know that in September uh, we had drone strike in South uh, South Libya that killed some 43 members of, of ISIS. 
this is uh, an ongoing problem and something that uh, is easier to contend with from U.S. point of view uh, or would be easier to contend with uh, if there was no war in Libya, if we had uh, U.S. troops and assets stationed in Libya. So I'm out of time, but you would agree that the instability there does create a fertile um, atmosphere for ISIS recruiting and ISIS growth? Uh, it does. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.